women's basketball team moves hotels after facing racism is becoming a very common news story now. Put up the picture full mass. They should not have to go through this. Utah women's basketball coach Lynn Roberts said her team experienced a series of racial hate crimes last week after arriving at its first NCAA tournament hotel and was forced to change hotels for safety concerns. Roberts did not go into the detail about what happened, but said Monday there were several incidents that happened last Thursday night after the team arrived in Idaho, which is located about 30 miles um, from um, Spokane, Washington. And that the team was scheduled to play in the tournament's opening weekend. So you got KSL.com, they reported early Tuesday that the slur was actually the N word. Um, and it was yelled at members of the Utah basketball team, along with other members of the traveling party, including cheerleaders, the school board, multiple occasions as they were walking to and from a restaurant near their hotel. Um, the Utah Deputy Athletic Director, Charmel Green, told KSL.com that the first incident occurred while the team was walking from the hotel to the restaurant. An unidentified person in a white truck revved the vehicle's engine near the team before yelling inward in the team's direction and then like a coward speeding off. Quote, we all just were in shock. And we looked at each other like, did we just hear that? Everybody was in shock, our cheerleaders, our students that were in that area that heard it clearly were just frozen. Green told KSL.com, quote, we kept walking, just shaking our heads like, I can't believe that. Green told KSL.com that a similar incident took place about two hours later as the team was leaving the restaurant. Green said two trucks parked near the team began revving their engines before people inside the vehicles again yelled the N word in their direction. KSL.com reported that Utah, that Utah filed a police report. Report uh, Roberts, excuse me, says the incidents were quote shocking and incredibly upsetting for all of us. Saying the team had not been exposed to racism very often because of the diversity on college campuses. Green told KSL.com that after the team safely returned to the hotel Thursday night, she got emotional and started to cry. All right, that's delayed trauma. Quote, I will never forget the sound that I heard. The intimidation of the noise that came from that engine and the N word, Green said. I go to bed and I hear it every night since I've been here, end quote. Robert said the um, NCAA and Gonzaga worked to move the team from one hotel to another. South Dakota State and UC um, Irvine also were staying at hotels in Idaho. And uh, even with the uh, Gonzaga as the whole school because of a lack of hotel space in the area, Green said she contacted Utah AD Mark Harlan, who had not yet made the trip to join the team after the incidents occurred Thursday night. So Harlan told KSL.com that the incident was disturbing and that the team should not have been in that area and it should not have happened. Far right extremists have been made, um, have made a presence in the region. Uh, this was already well known in 2018, at least nine hate groups operated in that region. Um, and so there's this, well, there's this pattern that should have been known. but. Sometimes I think we take for granted when we live in a diverse environment um, and individuals are not saying the N word or racist things to your face. They just do things behind your back typically. All right, uh, I really hate these women, young ladies went through this. Uh, and I, I think about my own daughter who's a freshman in college and, and a student athlete and how I know it would just turn her world upside down to have something like that happen. Um, so. We are obviously encouraging the leadership to continue to be advocates 
for diversity, for inclusion, and for proper education. And do your absolute best to protect your students from things like that. If you knew, and I'm not saying this is the administration's fault, but if if there's this history of extreme white nationalism in that one area right there in that region, you may want to either inoculate the young people by way of education and conversation, um, or say, you know what, we're not even going to play that game. We'll be on the other side of the city. All right, sharing thoughts here. I couldn't agree with you more. And unfortunately, your daughter, my daughter, we won't be able to inoculate them from yep. this, this America. That said, um, what happened to them is not fair. I like that the coach responded effectively. And I think it's time for dramatic measures. It may not be fair, but this should be the course of action. Nobody stays there. Nobody gets to host a game there. The economy loses mm-hmm. there until you, fair or not, eradicate this. Someone felt comfortable enough to, on multiple occasions, do this with the revving of the engine and the threatening. So I think it's time to have a zero tolerance policy. Why should it only be unfair to your daughter, my daughter, this basketball team? That's How about right. the people who live there? Weed them out. What you just said is so genius because you change policy when you make people get upset at the folk that create the dysfunction or the inconvenience. If you create a zero tolerance policy and other people start feeling this, right? The business community, et cetera, they will help you weed out the racist mofos that are among you in order to make sure their bottom line is not adversely affected.